All right, so I want to talk about how being good at video games just isn't fun. And I know, sounds weird, right? How could being better at a video game take the fun away? And truth be told, I don't know if there's a singular answer to really explain this, or if this is something that anyone else has even experienced. But it is something I have noticed with my own personal experiences, and that's what I want to talk about and try to explain. I mean, obviously, learning and growing better at any given game is going to make the game much more fun and enjoyable. There's no arguing against that. But as a player slowly learns the mechanics of a video game and all its nuances, the challenge and difficulty of the game slowly disappears and eventually this can turn what used to be a really fun game for someone into just a monotonous and boring experience. And I think this is why you hear a lot of people who have spent a long time with one certain game slowly lose the sense of fun that that game used to give them. Sure, they are really good and can fly through the game and excel at every aspect, but the fun in learning the game and struggling just to get through is all of a sudden missing. To help explain this point better, I'll give you an example from my own personal experience with video games. The original Super Mario Bros. game for the NES. Not only is it a monumental and extremely important game in the history of gaming, it's also pretty difficult. Compared to the modern side-scrolling Mario games, the original one for the NES is no joke. I've had Super Mario Bros. downloaded on my Wii from the Virtual Console for as long as I can remember and I could never beat the game to save my life. Seriously, you could have held me at gunpoint and told me to beat the game and I would have just told you to pull the trigger to get it over with. I definitely got better at the few beginning levels and slowly learnt about the warp zones, but I still could never beat the game fully. I had beaten the other classic Mario platformers such as Mario Bros. 3 and Super Mario World, heck even the American Super Mario Bros. 2 I'd beaten. But SMB1 always stood as the one that I could not beat. Well, that is until I sat down one day and used the Nintendo Switch Online's rewind function to practice the levels over and over as well as watching a few speedrunning videos on the game. Suddenly, the game became increasingly easy, and a game that used to take every ounce of skill I had just to maybe make it halfway into the game is all of a sudden something I can beat in a matter of a few minutes. There is a lot of fun being good at the original Mario Brothers. Flying through the levels and avoiding enemies is fun, knowing all the warp zones and secret areas is fun, setting up and getting certain glitches like Small Fire Mario to show others is fun. All of this, fun. It's a reward for players who decide to master and get better at the game, but this fun is not the same fun as the fun of trying to learn the game and struggling through each and every level. Like I said, I can speed through this game in a matter of a few minutes. I'm nowhere near a speedrunner's level, but it doesn't really take me that long to get through the game. I occasionally just boot it up and run through the game really quick, and not because it's fun to do necessarily, but because I know I can do it and it's something to kill time. First person shooter games, I think, can be a really excellent example of how being good at them takes the fun away. I used to be really into the competitive scene in CSGO and would pretty much only play ranked matches every day for months on end. Uh, one of the many perks of being a child was zero responsibilities. Now I was not the master at the game, heck I never even left the silver ranks, but I definitely was better than I am today at CSGO. At the beginning the game was frustrating because you start with knowing nothing about the guns and how they spray, the maps, or hardly any of the mechanics of the game. But after a little while of getting to learn all of these, the game is really fun. I will stand by and defend that CSGO is one of the best shooter games to ever exist, and if you take some time to learn the basics, it's really fun to play. But the fun slowly fades away when all you're focused on is ranking up and honing your skills to the best that they can be. Losing a match is the worst feeling because you could have just spent anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour of your life just to end up bottom fragging the leaderboard and getting demoted a rank. Or you could get really unlucky and just have bad teammates ruining your match. I eventually got away from the competitive scene and now when I do return to the game it's just to play for a little bit on some of the different side modes. The stakes are nowhere near as high as ranked matches and my skills are beyond rusty from what they used to be, but I have much more fun playing CSGO now than I ever had grinding away those competitive matches. Thinking back on my experiences with these games has shown me that while being better at a game can definitely lead to its own unique experience of fun, it's those casual experiences with a game that are the most fun. When all you care about is making it as far as you can into the game or winning your first 1v1 match against someone who's way better than you. The stakes are incredibly low in that the main focus and goal of you playing these games is just to have fun. Even though I went most of my life being awful at Super Mario Bros, it was always fun to end up making it to World 4-1 and just get obliterated by a falling spiny shell. 
And when I first started CSGO, the best matches were those where everything just clicked and I would go on a 30 kill match absolutely carrying the team. Not because I was practicing for hours on end to hone my skills, but simply, I was just having a really good game. Now I'm not going to sit here and try and ignore the fact that the fun from being a novice at a game is potentially linked to any sort of nostalgia I may have with that game. Obviously, both of the games that I mentioned are video games I have a longer history with and so in the earlier times of playing those games will undoubtedly be shrouded in the sense of nostalgia, but I genuinely do not think that's what's going on. What got me really thinking about the whole idea of how being better at video games takes the fun away was some of the more recent games I've played. Alright, so I'm gonna say something crazy here. You gotta be ready for this one because it's deep. I, I, I don't think the world's ready to hear what I'm about to say, but here it goes. Skills are transferable. I know, shocker, right? But, I mean, duh. This is a really obvious concept, but I think it is often overlooked and ignored when it comes to talking about video games. Anyone can see that by playing one FPS game, you are training yourself to be better at the core mechanics of almost every FPS game in the genre. Aiming and shooting are key components to these games. But, the same could be said for platformers, RPGs, or heck, even puzzle games. All of these genres have core components to them that, by playing one of the games and mastering a certain skill in that, you were inherently going to be better at those mechanics moving over to other games in that genre. And all that long-windedness just for me to say that platformer games are not fun for me to play anymore. Yeah, I know, really long and arduous setup to arrive at that point, but it's true. Platformers used to be one of, if not my favorite genre of video games. And don't get me wrong, I still really enjoy platformer games, but recently, over the past couple years, they just haven't been the same to play. And I think the reason that is is because they're just too easy for me now. I've grown up with platformer games my whole life, they're the comfort food of video gaming, but because of that, I've played my fair share of platformers and gotten pretty good at them. Super Mario 64 has always been one of my favorite games to play, but with absolutely no practice in that game for years, when it released on the Switch for the Super Mario 3D All-Stars game, I beat the game in one sitting. Super Mario 64 used to take me ages to beat. I'd get stuck in certain levels and not be able to get past them, I couldn't find the secrets, I, I was just bad at the game. But it was still fun to play. Even with having not played the game in years, I'm better at platforming and movement just in general. I just know what to look for when it comes to secrets because every game has similar ways to hide things. The fun that used to be running around these different worlds and exploring every corner to seeing what they have to hide and now it's just not as fun, it's really easy to do so. I feel like I always know exactly what I need to do, exactly how to do it, and exactly what I'm looking for to get that done. I recently got the remake of Pac-Man World because I had never played the original game and I was really interested in trying it out and man is this game not fun. There's nothing inherently wrong with the game and I think it's a fine enough game, even with its uninspired world themes, level design, and the ungodly amount of backtracking this game has, but that's a whole other discussion on its own. Point being, I think that Pac-Man World is a good game, it doesn't really do anything wrong, but it's just not fun to play and I think the biggest reason for this is that it's just too easy. I wasn't planning to fully complete the levels or even try to go for 100% and collect everything, but I managed to 100% almost every single level on the first try. The platforming is never really that difficult and the secrets and puzzles are extremely easy to figure out. It's a real shame because I wanted to enjoy this game, but I'm just not having fun with it and I think it's because there's no challenge when playing. I mean, playing this game feels as automatic and easy as breathing to me and that's coming from someone with asthma, so take that as you will. But you know what's not easy? Celeste. And you know what I have with Celeste? Anger issues. And also fun. Celeste is a platformer, yes, but it is also so different and unique to the genre with just the right amount of difficulty that it will challenge new and longtime gamers alike. Satisfying gameplay that rewards getting better. Celeste makes sure you are constantly having fun with the game. Instead of continuing to list off example after example telling you that oh this game that I used to have fun with is no longer fun all of a sudden and this game is fun because of this reason, I'm just going to tell you how I've started having fun playing video games again. I realized my biggest issue was that I just wasn't having fun with video games like I used to and a huge part of that was just because the games I was playing were too easy. And so what did I do? Well, 
I started to play games outside of my comfort zone and with the sole purpose of just playing a game to be playing a game. I love platformer games, but I've never really played any Metroidvania games, so I decided to finally check out Hollow Knight after years of having it on my Steam wishlist, and you know what? It's a pretty good game. Yeah, I really enjoyed the change of pace that Hollow Knight had for me when playing the game, and not only was it just an objectively good game, but I had a ton of fun playing it as well. I've also started playing more RPG games recently as well, and I used to really enjoy RPGs but slowly just stopped playing them and it's really nice to go back to the genre and re-experience that fun again. Another thing I've started to look more into is those more linear single player story driven games such as Star Wars Fallen Order or Metal Gear Rising, games that I don't really fit the style that I would typically go for but I ended up being really glad I gave them a chance because of just how much fun I had playing them. All of these games are outside of my usual style and by default means I'm not going to be as good at them, but that's okay. I'm not playing these games to become the top player in the field, I'm playing these games just to have fun. Gaming is a hobby, always has been and probably always will be for me, and it's something that I like to do in my free time to, well, have fun. Of course every so often I do want to play a game that I'm very familiar with and much better at, then that's fine. I'll always have a brand new level to play in Mario Maker, or another time trial ghost to grind out in Mario Kart 8. With the modern climate of gaming and the growing accessibility of the medium, there's more games out there than you could shake a power glove at, so to stick to just one genre or style of game would be ridiculous. Like I've said many times as a counter argument, there is a sense of fun to knowing everything about a game and being the best you can be at it, but change things up from time to time. Give yourself new opportunities in video games. Maybe you'll realize how being good at video games can just take the fun out of them. Or this is all entirely just a me thing and I've wasted my time trying to justify it.